So uh, this is Changing Times, Changing Worlds uh, show, The Otherworldly. And we are uh, here to give you a taste of Changing Times, Changing Worlds conference. It's just going to be virtual this year and we hope we'll go back to being in person next year. I am your host, Chibakan, and tonight we are collecting ghost stories and stories, especially of haunted houses. I have, um, I, I grew up in a haunted house and we have our summer cottage is, I believe you'd call it ha haunted. Uh, the dorm I stayed in was haunted. We've had lots of hauntings. When I was in college um, and hitchhiking was still going on back in the 60s, I asked people when I got rides from them if they had ever seen a ghost. Uh, and I would say that something like 95% of the people told me about the ghosts that they had seen. And I would say 95% of those told me they never told anybody else because <laughs> gee, what a surprise. Nobody wants to be considered a nut. <laughs> and so, um, so we didn't, uh, so, so you will tell a lot of people things when you know it's totally anonymous which is, is why we're going to let anybody who wants to share through yep. the chat or share with, share with their, um, if you have one of those clever things that, that changes your voice, go for it. Or, or you know, turn your, your uh, sit, you know, with your face back to the thing. But yeah, I'm looking for, for uh, stories. Um, and uh, the house that we live in, lived in when I was growing up, the, the doorknobs would turn. And I'm saying, this is when nobody had gone through the door in a week and suddenly the doorknob suddenly decides it's gonna turn far enough to open the door so the door can creep, up, creep open. Things moved. I'm not going to say that this wasn't some sort of, it's not necessarily a ghost. There could be lots of other things that are, are moving things. Uh, there are lots of re things, but, but we generally call that haunting. And uh, another problem with these stories is, of course, people like my mother, who I love dearly, but she would never let the facts get in the way of a good story. Uh, <laughs> one day, uh, oh, well, one of the things that happened, I think the third floor of our house was, was haunted. Uh, and Absolutely. my littler sister was afraid because there were things moving around on the third floor. So Liz, do you want to tell about the rocking chair? Uh, I, I, had, I lived on the third floor with my brother and- Cause you every, changed places. Every day when I would go upstairs, there was a storage room at the top of the stairs. And every day I had to pull a door shut and it, it, it shut very sturdily you know it wasn't something that was loose it just was opened every day when I came in so I would go into my room and put my books on my rocking chair and I'd go to go downstairs it, it never happened when I was in the room I would go downstairs and I would come up and my books would be on the floor Almost, mm. almost every day. And um, th those who were the largest, you know, they were smaller things, but those are the things, I just got used to it. You know, the door would be open and my books would be on the floor. Yeah, and, and Kitty could only my, that. Only my brother and I were upstairs and generally he wasn't home. When you know when I got home, but that was that was the so one night uh, was it? Oh Kitty? my God! The three knocks. Remember those? The three knocks. I was I started studying the paranormal way back in way uh, back. junior high, and so I had heard the tradition of if you hear three knocks in the in the wall above you, then that that is a warning that somebody in the house is about to die. Well, my sister was having a sleepover and yeah. uh, 
uh, there, were four, there were four. They knocks. heard. There were there were four knocks, yeah. and so well the thing is there was knocking inside the walls. So yeah. they uh, immediately they were like, "What do we do?" There's like, "Uh, lock the door." Okay, uh, so one of them locked the door and said, "Now what do we do?" It's like, "Um, get get help help Mister." So he heard <laughs> this screaming. He got two teenage girls upstairs. He hit that door at about 40 miles an hour and bounced off of it. Uh, and then, of course, he went back to bed when he found out they'd heard noises. And I tried to calm them down, too. So mom had to spend an oh. hour calming them down. <laughs> but I tried to calm them down by saying, well, how many knocks? And they said four. And I said, oh, well, that's OK. Three is a death knock. <laughs> well, that was really calming. That Well, I thought it would be, but <laughs> God forbid that she take advice from an expert. And when my mother told the story later, she had me saying, ah, oh, three is the death knock. So you, you just <laughs> have to, you have to take into account people who will make a much better story out of things. Oh, you didn't, matter, have to, you didn't have to make a better story out of that. I've never been so scared in my life. <laughs> But my, um, I, I have another story I wanted to tell because I think most people have heard of the phantom hitchhiker where somebody yes. drops a hitchhiker off and her sweater's there and she, they go to take it back and the mother says, oh no, she died. Well, actually a friend of mine took a sweater back and there was this old woman and when he had the sweater in his hand, she said, oh no, she's done it again, which is a completely, in my view, a different reaction than, oh, that's my daughter's sweater, Ooh, spooky, spooky. No, she's like, and he said, would you like a cup of coffee? And she invited it in and said, this, my, my daughter died a few years ago and this, this has been happening ever since. And he gave her a cup of coffee. So the story has changed a bit, but that, as as you would expect, you know, if you keep having your daughter's sweater show up again, you'll get eventually you'll get used to it, um, and that is that is that is the thing about it. If you are wedded to making a good story, then that's going to be a different situation than if you're trying to find out what is going on and trying to figure out um, what the, uh, you know, how, what, what's going on, how do things work? I was always the one in the dorms that people would come to when something spooky, there, there's eyes, there's eyes staring at me from the darkness. And okay, well, the first thing we do is we check and make sure there are no sources of light. I mean, these days with all the little red lights around, yeah. <laughs> How'd anybody get to know? But, um, but it, it, anybody who's looking into these things always checks for other explanations first. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm gonna, before I, I solicit, try and pull teeth and, and get you to tell your own stories, mm -hmm. to tell you one story which I found very, very interesting. I heard it secondhand, but my daughter heard it. Well, I heard it thirdhand, my daughter heard it secondhand. Um, from a mother who was explaining how they had moved into a new house. Well, it was an old house and they had a three-year-old and the three-year-old was talking, uh, was, was talking about the ladies, the ladies in his room. And, uh, but he, he became, as, as weeks passed, he was more and more upset because the ladies told him he was lying and he wasn't. He said, I'm telling the truth, mom, they're, they're, but I'm, they're, they're, they keep telling me I'm lying and I'm not. And what it was was that, it was that there were two ladies in long skirts and he kept saying there's three ladies. And they were, and one of the ladies said, no, no, it's just you and me, dear. And the other two ladies said, dear, you mustn't lie. There's only us two and you. So apparently here's a haunted house in which this poor little three-year-old can't 
is being told he's lying. He's how many three year olds see a ghost and are told not to not to make things up. Well, this time it's the ghosts who are telling him, "Don't make things up." It's and and the ghosts can't see each other. The two that died together are haunting together, and they can't see the third one, and the third one can't see the other two. Hmm. Now, how much, that's how much for being able to hang out with your spectral buddies? <laughs> yeah, well, that that is one aspect of haunting <laughs> that I hadn't heard about. the The funny thing was that my other daughter was he hearing this in, in some uh, workshop at a pagan thing. And there was this teenage boy going, oh my God, because he'd grown, gee. <laughs> and there was his mother telling stories about him when he was a kid. But uh, mm. yeah, it's- yeah. I feel badly for the one that couldn't see, that nobody could see. Well, yep. you know, he could see, the little, the little boy could see both of them. Mm -hmm. right. one, boy, one, one was all, all alone. What? One was all alone. Yeah, well, Except, she didn't have anybody well. to haunt with, but she could talk to the little kid. And so that's nice. Okay. I mean, a lot of I mean, a lot of hauntings have have to do with don't you be changing my house. I had my house the way I wanted it and you're changing things. Like my rocking chair. Yes, don't mm. put that rocking chair there. <laughs> So, what, okay, I got to brag on Liz, though, because when, uh -oh. because when she, uh, when, when the, the ghost kept dumping the, uh, making the chair rock and dumping her books, so she started putting the, the books on the end of the bed instead, say, rock that. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, um. didn't move, they didn't move after that. <laughs> Anyway, so I, I'm hoping that we can get some other people. Liz, do you want to talk about the lake? All right, oh. I have four four daughters. And we were at we have a a, a camp on the lake in Maine. And one day we were just just randomly talking on the porch some one evening. And one of them said um, I, I've seen this like white ghostly kind of person standing, um, at the top, uh, in, in the loft and the other three immediately said, I've seen the same thing. And they each described what they saw and it was identical. Now, no one's ever died in the house. No one's, ever, you know, there's never been. We built the camp, uh, well, like in 1954. Um, but each one of them, as you said, nobody wants to tell, say that they saw something. Well, none of them wanted to scare their sisters. So they never mentioned it until this one mm. night. And they all described exactly the same thing yeah. just this white male figure standing in the same place for each one of them and i've gone up and looked to see as you said you know chippecan that that it you know are there lights you know lights that hit a particular way you know could there be an another explanation a worldly, this worldly explanation for what they saw. Mm. And um, I, I haven't found anything that, you know, so I think what they, I, I think someone wanted to camp on the lake, so they took ours. <laughs> mm. Yeah. And, Other possible. Allow us to say, my father built that that lake, that 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 cabin. Yeah, we're the mm -hmm. only people that have ever lived. No, there. But nobody has died there. That but, they're just but somebody he, who lives. Have there. Have you considered the possibility that you had a pissed off land spirit? What's a pissed I, off land spirit? Well, I know pissed well, off. What's a land a la spirit? <laughs> I'm very familiar the, with the, pissed off. <laughs> the the spirit of the 
literally the spirit of the land of the area that your dad built the cabin on may have taken umbrage as it were at um your family moving in i don't think he's pissed off i don't i we uh i've got another daughter i have lots of daughters here you have two hi cat you take the seat if you're gonna say okay. something there are and we had a lot of sightings in the area. My roommate, you know, coming to my house, I, I'm two miles from the camp. Um, he felt, he saw the white cloudish thing. I, I don't know how to describe it. Uh, it's normally referred to as ectoplasm. Ectoplasm, okay. And... Um, he saw it in the road and he, you know tried to avoid it couldn't and he could feel it go through him this very cold feeling yep and um and my sister had um and a similar experience um on our way to uh, on the way to the lake so i think the area has a lot of pissed off whatever you said. Liz, Liz, yeah, tell yeah. them about the Kitty's Kitty's car ghost. That that was the one I was talking about. She, oh. Kitty Kitty's a fairly his um cat, wouldn't you say she's the more hysterical sister? I, I'd say that of the sisters, she's the one most likely to get upset and make a scene. Right. So she's driving home one night and she goes around a corner and you know hits the brakes because this is white what pissed off what well i was assuming it was angry but yeah it could just be manifesting like hi i'm here um but it a land spirit is i believe the latin term is genus loci spirit yeah. of place okay but, but kitty's well, i think was a ghost yeah uh, kitty's i think was a ghost and there's only one way home out there because you're going around a lake. So mm -hmm. every every night that she went out, she had to drive around this corner and she would be petrified. And she saw it more than once. Okay. I never saw it, but... And then you can. Okay. Yeah. My mother would like me to add a little bit more of my experiences at the lake. Oh, you had one too? Oh, yeah. We know we know the guy at the lake. Yeah. You I mean, know the guy at the lake? yeah. And our friends, you, you know how, how yeah. uh, we go up with Joni and Ray and spend a week at the lake? They right. have also seen him and heard it. Him. Oh and my God! You never told me. I didn't know. You didn't know. No, we. Whenever we come into the lake, because we're all spiritually minded ladies, we right? Just, we say hello. Uh, it's nice to be back. It's nice to see you again, and uh, and we all say hello to the spirit. And when we play cards against humanity, which we yeah, we. we we're a bunch of ladies having fun, fun together, hanging out with our friends at the lake. We get a couple of drinks, we get some cards going, we pour them a drink and we deal them in. And the land spirit Why? has won cards against humanity more than once. Well, no wonder he's pissed at us. <laughs> we don't ever give him a drink. There you go. Yeah, he's always super nice with us. Anybody? And, um, and the answer is because you handed it you did exactly the right thing. Yeah, uh, Jody and Joni has seen the the uh, spirit walking across the catwalk, which I haven't. I've heard the footstep, but I haven't seen it. I've, and, ne I've never seen it, and I, I, I don't know why. Yeah, but. And I just want to add that um, Joni and Ray have started calling the spirit Bob because. Uh, not okay. because they, we think it's the ghost of our grandfather who's named Bob, but because 
we got our grandfather a sign that said no parking except for Bob. So <laughs> when they, they oh, drive, okay. drive in, it says, ah, oh, this is Bob's uh, parking space. Hi, Bob, we're here again. So I, okay. I, just a nickname, but yeah. So we're nice to the spirit and the spirit just doesn't really spook us. And, well, that's really yeah, neat. Now, which, which reinforces the concept that it's a land spirit as opposed to a ghost, because well, ghosts yeah, don't normally. Kind of yeah. yeah, he's also really not pissed yeah. off. We've been calling him the house white because well, I, yeah, that he, would work too. I, that's what I told him. I but I used to go up there. there uh, let's face it; it's a, it's a lake in the summer. There's crowds of people. There's sailboats. There's speedboats. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of stuff. Water skiing. I used to go up before anybody came and I would be alone on the lake, alone. I'm saying there would be like maybe three people on the lake and I would go in and when I go to bed, I would hear walking, I would hear footsteps upstairs. Well, of course, the first time you check, but after a while you just get used to it. And a couple times I even heard the creak of the old wire spring beds on the cots like he was actually getting going to bed. But, okay, yeah. Now, he, I forgot it, to mention the screen porch. Oh, the screen porch, yeah. Yeah, um, okay, hi, I'm back. I just remember no problem. story about Bob the Land Spirit. And, um, and it will give everybody else a chance to talk to. We will, I just wanted to add this part. Um, because it's a cabin that's shared by the entire family, uh, people will go up and we'll check and because it's not used in the winter there's some maintenance that needs to be done <laughs> yeah. and one in one year we came and we found that the uh, screen porch uh, the screen had kind of popped off and needed to be nailed down and my sister's like oh god that's gonna be a whole production because at that point it was nailed on from the outside so you need to go around with a ladder and pull the screen back down and tack it back down. And she's like, okay, I guess we're going to do gun. that while we're here. And uh, yeah, this, this is a new yeah, way of doing it. Gun, but she didn't have to because the next day she went to the screen porch and it had fixed itself, or rather. Geez, I wish you'd do it for me in the spring. Hmm. Now, is it a ghost when, and this is a question that it, really a question. Similar because experience. Just, I, I would go before we had hooked up the water. So I would go and I, every morning I would take the bucket down to the end of the lake and bring it up and I would use it to drink and wash dishes. And then the last thing I would pour it into the toilet. And one day morning I woke up and, and the, the, uh, bucket was empty and I was like oh I guess I forgot to flush but there's nothing there hmm okay the bucket, it, was full. The, bu the bucket was full yes I'm sorry I said the wrong thing the bucket was full even though I thought I'd remembered emptying it and the next day uh it I, I was careful to you know flush it and the next morning the bucket was full again so what we have here is a spirit that is making repairs carrying wood carrying water mm-hmm and responding. So that is kind of like a haunting, but it's not, it's it's a house spirit. Yeah, it, it's not a haunting because it's not somebody who's dead. It's actually somebody who is never technically alive. <laughs> yeah. How, not in the human sense. Is it? Okay, this is a question for you too because I'm fairly ignorant on all this. Um, after my brother died, uh, we were having the memorial service one weekend, and I, I drove down. I got about the same time as my cousin. And he told me, oh, I had a dream about Bobby last night. Um, and um, he, he said, you know, you're not supposed to be here. You're dead. And he said, yeah, well, only you can see me. And, he, you know, I, we thought it was an interesting dream, and I went down to the camp. Uh, our camp with diff different camps and I got to the camp and there are a bunch of people you know how people congregate 
when someone yeah. died. Yeah. And there were a bunch of people sitting there and they were sitting there in the dark. So naturally, I said, why are you sitting in the dark? And he said, that's because, oh, the lights keep going back on and off. And and my cousin had mentioned that in the dream, that he was doing things. Now, would that have been my brother's ghost messing with the lights? Or would that be something different? Well, assuming we can eliminate faulty wiring. Which hasn't foremost. happened. It hasn't happened again. It was then that that leaves out faulty wiring. It was probably a spirit of some sort, most likely your brother, having a little fun with people. Which would have been <laughs> his nature. Yeah. Either that so or that, simply saying, "Hi, I haven't left." Well, I hope he's left. It, I mean, get pretty boring out there. The eight months a year. <laughs> well, you know, he he could be you know making friends with the chipmunks or things. Okay, maybe he, now maybe he and the land maybe he and the land spirit are playing pinochle. Do goats have to stay in in this world or could he have come back? He's probably moved on by now. Well and, um, yeah the, the as I said the lights have never done that before uh, or yeah. since before or since but can ghosts visit just kind of come in and play with you and then leave medium say so yeah okay uh thor are you trying but to get that, our attention that yeah, be a uh, actually um actually yes um beers can come and go that way uh my wife her parent house is an old house from the 1890s and they have a a French store in the interior that has pictures of uh, past relatives and stuff like that. There was an unofficial ancestor altar. And a couple of times that I stayed the night at that house, I saw somebody in a red flannel shirt, big bulky person, and they were walking around. They kind of were checking things out and so forth. And she said, oh yeah, that's one of my relatives. So mm. uh, this house has visitors, it has ancestors that come and visit. Um, and so, yes, they can do that, uh, even though they passed on. Mm -hmm. So, yes, you can get visits like that. Um, our uncle still pays visits, and he died like almost three years ago this coming November. Now, and is there a is there a difference between the ones you can see with color like you're seeing and the ones that just appear like smoky white? Mm. Not really. I mean, when I used to do uh, ghost investigations kinds of thing, a Native American friend of mine, one of my best friends, has a lot of experience doing that. And we would walk around with a tape recorder and just record and try to talk to things that are out there. And we did that at the Confederate Memorial at Point Lookout State Park in uh, Maryland. And I actually did get some voices on the tape that actually responded to the conversation. Uh, when I went to Point Lookout where the lighthouse is, I got additional voices on tape. Wow. Cool. And uh, some of those have been confirmed through local lore. Like at Point Lookout, there is a known entity of a little girl that's looking for her mommy, who was a nurse at the time that Point Lookout had a military hospital during the Civil War. Now, a large part of that cemetery and the prisoner of war camp is now underneath the bay. I mean, it's underneath the river. It, it, it's underwater now. Yep. And a lot of that came up and they had to rebury them. Ooh, not good. Not no. good from not good from both a health standpoint and a metaphysical standpoint. Well that's how you end up with things point, like poltergeist. Well, that's why Point Lookout, Maryland is one of the most haunted places on the East Coast. Is it really? Um, yes, it is. Point Lookout, Maryland 
is in St. Mary's County. It's one of the most haunted places on the East Coast. There's documentaries about it. Uh, I've actually even heard troop doing formation marching just right near where I was recording. I had it all on tape. So it, it, you can have entities that way. I went to one place that was a genuine haunted house. I mean, I had the same tape recorder. And just before we got up there, there was a little kid voice that said, I want to play. And then an older voice that said, get out. You know, just like that. I was like, whoa. Well, when we walked in there, there was a temperature difference in the house. It was oppressive. Um, this, the, the gentleman that lived in the house was in his early 20s. And um, he claimed to have a relationship with the spirit that was in the house. And his bed would be moved 90 degrees. And then from this to this within his bedroom when he woke up the next morning. Um, wow. He had he had other things going on. He had the spirit come into his dreams and try to have sexual encounters with him. Uh, when we went upstairs to the attic, we found that he had two six foot mirrors facing each other in an altar in the middle. Ooh, that's not good. No, he made, he was playing with stuff that he didn't really understand. Yeah. And the thing was, though, that spirit merged with the house. The house basically pushed us out of the house. And as I was leaving that place, up in the attic, I saw two red eyeballs. Oh, boy, so, the red eyeballs. Yep. That's not good. No. And, I yeah, I think a couple of the elders from our coven group went over there and did a genuine house cleaning. Yeah, that sounds like the full burning, burning rosemary, war water, Forthies vinegar, moon water, lots and lots of praying and focusing. And, oh, in, yeah. abso and in absolute last resort, burn the place to the ground. <laughs> that, that's a bit extreme. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but I, I've never... But then Found. Then where would they go? Wouldn't they just go to somebody else's house? No, they'd either move on or they'd be probably still, still stuck in that space. Okay. But they would have less of a physical touchstone in the world. Do you think the mirror um, thing was enhancing them? Oh, that create that creates a really nasty doorway. Right. Yeah, it does. You have two mirrors. Yeah, um, the, about the no only place I know that's not, not in about the only place I know that's safe is the haunted mansions at Disneyland and Disney World. Yes. Where um, they're yeah. on the ride. Yeah, they're they're on the ride, and you, at one point things slow down, and you have this endless corridor, which it was created by you know, to a mirror and a mm -hmm. semi mirrored surface facing each other. Now, here's a factoid, because I used to work at the uh, Walt Disney World in Florida, and um, I noticed my camera's frozen. Yeah. Huh. Uh, yeah, I'm here. Huh. It's not letting me turn on my camera. Weird. <laughs> okay, well, anyway. We've got, you, we've got your voice. You, yes. you, uh, you, made, you made them mad. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Uh, I used to work at Walt. Um, I used to work at Walt Disney World. Uh, oh, another app is using the camera. That's weird. What app is using the camera? Anyway, um, <laughs> I used to work at Disney, and the haunted mansion is actually an unofficial relic to the past members that worked at Walt Disney World who have hmm. died. There are a lot of the gravestones and a lot of the pictures are actually people who used to work at Disney who passed on, or they were people who, um, 
who were longtime uh, frequent frequent visitors or investors to Walt Disney mm -hmm. World, and they passed on, and they they uh, put part of their inheritance into mm -hmm. Disney, and they get honored there. Um, the in the, the crystal ball that has the hologram. Yep. Um, that part of the ride, the person who's actually in that hologram was a former employee of Disney that died. And okay. there are there are reports of ghosts that visit Disneyland and Disney World, no. mainly because that place has imbued a lot of power. Um, it's a small world ride. That one, they have to switch out people every two weeks, not only because of the monotony of the music, but because <laughs> people are swearing that the dolls are possessed. The characters throughout the ride are possessed. Uh, if there was a gate to the inferno anywhere on Disney World or Disneyland, it would be in the It's a Small World ride. <laughs> Which is, it's a small world ride. I went there. It's, what, it's the boat ride where you're surrounded by thousands, maybe tens of thousands okay. of little dancing dolls of all. And they're saying, it's a world of love. It's a world of... And after about five minutes, you want to scream. <laughs> yes. Now, there is one part that ironically, you know, there... There are people who say it's the, that those dolls kind of turn their heads and look at you or their eyes are always watching you. And that kind of really makes some of them freaky. Um, but there's the other key piece is that um, Epcot was supposed to be a futuristic city that was yes. made for the workers who worked at Disney because he wanted an immersive culture, but he knew that he wanted people that enjoyed working there and they were putting their life into making his dream come true. So he was going to have it that way. But when this Walt Disney died and his brother took over, they couldn't pull the same uh, monetary prowess with him as, he, as Walt did himself. So they turned it over to the investors and said, what do you want? And they wanted a 50s nostalgia town, which has now become this exclusive gated community where you have to make, you have to be able to afford more than a $3 million yeah. place in order to just to get in. And here's the kicker. Like Disney, Disney has its own uh, set up power grid and everything. But yeah, um, there are helpful, there were, there were reports of little kids who say they see old people walking around the park and then disappear. Um, well, there's well, also you have so many Disney files who are spreading their ashes, have relatives dump their... Yes. And, you know, and, and that's a big problem at Disney World. Yes. Um, actually, they've had, I remember one of the times that I was working there and they had to shut down Space Mountain because somebody threw their ashes out on Space Mountain uh, during the ride. And that's one of the things that will get you banned from Disney, from what I understand. Yes, because they don't like it. Because it gets, it gets well, into the equipment. And it, it's also a considered a health hazard. And the tourists. Yes, it is. And um, the other thing is that they actually have a code for that. When, when they catch somebody throwing ashes, they actually have a code for that and they have a whole procedure for that. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah, they, Disney would like you to ask permission before you do that, but most people don't. Yeah. The, other place, the other place people like to throw their ashes is in that body of water right by the castle. Oh, yeah. That's a popular place. Or they dump it at the statue of Walt Disney's feet. No. 
Okay. I've we're, already. We're getting we're, close toward the end. Can we ask Amy, Amy, or anybody else if they had something they wanted to throw in? Not well, that this has I, been great. I'm, I'm still hung up on the um, ghosts that you can see that you you know, like you said, had a red shirt or green shirt or whatever. You know. Uh -huh. And the misty ones, is that a way that, you know, you know what I mean, the white ones yeah. that you, you can kind of at, see through? Is there at any, risk of, at the, is there at the risk any of difference? sounding like Egon Spengler. Is that, <laughs> is there any difference between them? Yeah. Yeah. Among other things, a lot of times the misty ones aren't sentient. Aren't what? They're... Okay, they don't think. They're literally like an ever repeating loop on a recording or a um a video. That's that's like the ones that walk down the uh hallways of castles every night at 3 a.m. or you know, Anne Boleyn walking with her head tucked underneath her arm around the battlements of the Tower of London. It's actually not a person. It's the image of a person kind of impressed into the. I think you froze. No, I heard here. him. I heard him. Yeah. yeah. Impressed into the fabric <sighs> of reality. And that's what. You kind of froze there. The, okay. So that that's the misty one. And what's the difference between that and the one that you can see like in color? They have a mind and a soul and a certain amount of freedom of action that the others don't. Is it they've come back if they if yeah. they Wow, we're having one of those nights. Yeah, we may have pissed them off. <laughs> no, I think it has more to do with the uh, storm front moving through. Oh, come on. I was having fun. I know. <laughs> I'm looking forward to taking all the particulate matter from, you know, the fact that the Pacific Northwest is on fire out of the air. Oh, God. I hope they get rain soon. So uh, I have a fun one. Yeah? yeah? Yes, it's uh, my uh, significant uh, familiar who have passed over. I call her Ghost Kitty. And we have one of those. Yes, and so there's some nights when I'm staying over, there's the whole sensation of a cat jumping on my bed. And oh, I can my sister it. had that. And yeah. you could feel you walking up yes, your body. Yes, exactly. And yeah, ghost cats and Cats and dogs are very common. I'm not going to leave. You still need me. You still love me. Yes, exactly. We have one of those in our house. Now, we don't have cats. But Kathy especially has heard when she's up at like three or four in the morning, the sound of paws on the linoleum. And that feeling that something is poking its head around the corner, looking and saying, why aren't you in bed yet? I have <laughs> things to do, as cats can do. And indeed, I've had times when I've been up late and I've got the bedroom door shut and suddenly, you know how sometimes cats will just push the door open a little bit to, oh, what's going on in here? To sneak in, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that kind of, and it's like, yes, I'm going to bed in a few minutes. Don't worry about it. We also occasionally find in the middle of the basement floor, dead rodents. Usually uh, field mice or, um, shrews or moles and it's just like well unless they ran across the lolly column and decided goodbye cruel world something dropped that there <laughs> and so that that's the standard you know cat showing us how good a hunter it is yeah and hopefully ghost cats don't have the same reaction that living ones do when they bite into a mole which is oh my god this tastes terrible <laughs> uh where we used to have archery practice had a lot of moles and watching the cats stalk, pounce, bite, and then immediately throw away and start eating grass because moles apparently have a really bad taste. I'll take your word of, for it. Which is, uh, from what I, well, having had arrows disappear into mole runs, 
<laughs> but you know that that's well i, I remember my sister um younger sister describing a cat that slept on her bed and mm -hmm. would walk walk and and she could feel the weight um on her like like a cat was there and finally she just gave into it and said okay stay you know yeah you want if nothing else it's the ultimate hypoallergenic pet <laughs> kathy and i are both um, allergic to cats heavily and so having a ghost cat in the house along with all, all the stuffy kitties is kind of a uh oh that's good yeah bonus yeah 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 my my dog my favorite dog passed away before i started dating my current wife and i kind of like wish that she could have met her your only wife bitch <laughs> only wife right so yes uh, current so, wife i mean you are my wife yes <laughs> all right you currently are my wife yes all right, I, apparently I stepped in it. Okay. <laughs> yes, yeah. you, yes, you did. They're laughing okay. and said, yes, you did. Okay, <laughs> anyway. So she never got to meet my dog. But one of the days that she stayed over, she said she saw a ghost of a dog running and jumping on a bed, really excited like he had the zoomies. And... I said, well, what kind of dog was it? Because we had several dogs during our time at the yeah. house. And then she said, well, it looks like a German Shepherd. I said, well, that's my dog. And she goes, well, it's kind of like here and trying to lick my hand and stuff. I said, okay, that's about right. I said, she's happy. I said, that's good. Because I hadn't yet seen the dog since it passed. And it was a pretty hard passing for me. And you know, it was good to know that she's happy and well, and that she kind of let me know that she was happy with who I ended up with. <laughs> I hope That's you still thing. are. I hope you still are after you stepped in it. <laughs> <laughs> I am. She 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 likes yeah. to give me crap when I deserve it. <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good. Good to hear. So I actually, uh, we, we've known each other for like 20 years. She's the niece of the family I helped take care of. Okay. So good. we get along real well. We're good. good. I'm, allowed to, I'm allowed to step in it once in a while. We have a saying, the freedom, the freedom, we have the freedom to have successes, but we also have the freedom to make mistakes. Sounds That's good. very he very healthy. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Which is why I'm not married anymore. <laughs> well, the, the thing is, she's the one who's part medium, so she gets to see these spirits and things as they come by and stuff, and she confirms some of the things that I experienced. So it's always uh, it's, nice to have somebody, somebody who can say, yep, you're not crazy. Yes, you that is that. very nice. Yes, yes. That's Kathy's and, job with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, and, and it's that's nice. Chip, Chippecan's job with me. Hmm. Is he not crazy? That I'm not crazy. Uh, it is well, very like encouraging to, be, to know it. I'd, I'd like it to be our see changing times world, uh, changing worlds job for everybody because there's a lot of people out there who are pretending they're not psychic, who are pretending they're not seeing ghosts, who are pretending that it's the, the a placebo effect rather than the healing they're doing. And damn mm -hmm. it, uh -huh. this is real, and we might as well just and, get get with the program. And but, then you have somebody like me who. When he walks into a room, the ghosts decide to be elsewhere. So ne never take me on a ghost hunting, ghost exploring expedition unless you want a really boring night. Well, my, the ghosts in my room never did anything when I was there. 
the, the books yeah. always moved, the door always moved when I wasn't there. Yeah, I yeah. think that there's a very good possibility that there is, um, there are people whose psychic ability is an anti-sci field that- No, the, I, I, I'm definitely things, not that. I things don't happen I know around couple, them. I know a couple of people like that. But I think like make the, maybe the amazing Randy is like, no matter how powerful you are, if he comes near you, you get in his field, it's not going to work. So. Well, it doesn't matter. He, he's dead. So he's already gotten the, oh, I guess I was wrong <laughs> moment. Unless he, unless he woke up and, and wanted to, uh, and, and wanted to, to, uh, bleh, uh, to, to, to continue thinking the same thing. I have great faith in, that you keep a lot of the same thoughts. Uh, in which after case, you're he dead. gets to spend eternity in a gray, formless void with nothing else in there but him. And until he gets bored enough, and then then he can start thinking about something else. Yeah. But uh, any okay, did anybody else have a wonderful story they wanted to share? Did you? You haven't shared one. Oh, I got uh, my daughters to share some of them. Yeah. Sean, did you have anything? I've got one. Actually, it happened at the hotel that we are hopefully going to be having changing times at next year. Um, oh, I was I? Uh, I guess, you know, whatever. The, the one I call um, Dirty Dancing Meets the Shining. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. I was hunting for a functional ice machine. And I got down to, I think it was like the fifth floor. And there was something moaning. Now, this wasn't the wind. This, this was definitely a, a moan. And my basic answer was, take a good look at what you're trying to frighten. You might want to reconsider your unlife decisions. And the moaning stopped. <laughs> <laughs> so you're giving ghosts crap. Yes. And demons yes. and anything else. Which is and I can vouch... I can vouch for that spirit at that one yeah. uh, hotel because I was there too. And yep. uh, it wasn't mooning me, but it was this mischievous poke, 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 poke. I think that's poke. probably the little kid that drowned there, which is why we couldn't use the uh, pools. Yes, I hope it I was. Did. I hope this I one did. was definitely not human not human or if it had been it was really not a nice person and it was yeah. very much a case of take a good look at what you're trying to scare i just hope and, i get the same female entity that came into my room <laughs> <laughs> yeah well remember that that, that's so what, foreboding that's a, yeah and, and all i can think of is the is a couple of scenes out of the um miniseries rose red that was good. I, I didn't see yeah. that. One of the few Stephen Kings that I actually like. Oh, I, I thought that was great. There were so many different types of psychics that that were, yeah, you got to, there are so many different kinds. And, and being mm -hmm. psychic doesn't necessarily you're gonna mean you're going to be a nice person. Yeah. <laughs> right. And, you know, basically what I saw there was, oh, it's the Vumbies. Basically, uh, free-willed zombies, West African liches. Oh, yeah, there are really nasty. Uh, I kind of like subspecies. I kind of like the woman, or in my case, I'd prefer a man to come in my bedroom. I think that would yeah, be well, better than, than zombies. Oh, well, the, the, this what you you need to see the miniseries to get the get the um, references. I'm going to I'm going to just plug here a, a book that I well, it was three books I read last year. Uh, it was written by Andrea Perone. Um, and it was anybody here of the movie The Conjuring? Which, which yes. was, of it. it was a I heard a lot of people swear about it. Oh, it was at it. But yeah. after after that book came out, the um, one of the women talked to all the other people who've been in the house, all their family, and they and she wrote a series of three books. Uh, it was not perhaps the best written, but it was the most 
honest book on hauntings I have ever encountered because there were inexplicable things like she, their friends didn't like to come over because the phone would ring and sometimes the phone receiver would pick up and float across the room and they're like yeah well there's nobody there because it's not a real phone call and they're like what and they'd see people and occasionally they would walk through a door and they would be in a different century and the people sitting at the table would look at them and they're like and she suddenly realized that the people in a different century were seeing a ghost walk into the dining room yeah because and and there were lots of other weird things going on apparently they were just on sounds a like there's nexus of of weird yeah, i was gonna say sounds like there's a serious dent in space time yeah and and the thing is that it wasn't all bad it certainly wasn't a neat little story you could wrap up with a in and have done after 90 or 120 minutes and have uh this the warrens come out looking like heroes it was just dumb huh. <laughs> uh, and, but the book explored it and how all of these experiences ended up helping them become better people and and they learned spiritual lessons although sometimes it was freaky and sometimes ghosts showed up uh the, a fence broke and uh one of the kids was home alone and there was a storm and she had to nail it and some ghost came up and held the boards for her while she nailed the nails in that kind of thing this is this is the kind of ghost interaction that i have with my ghosts helping with repairs and and uh stuff. send them my way oh god yes well that's why traditionally housewives would always put out offerings for the house mm -hmm. spirits we had in our uh, all our previous house that there was a when we got to after we bought the property after we closed we found a circle of trees up back so when we tried to plant it every time i tried to i picked a place to put a fruit tree we'd find a huge boulder in it my husband said i had had a magical ability to find huge boulders One well of those, you are living in new england we are living in new england you could dig anywhere and find we put one with a flat top in the middle of it and not only did um Sometimes if we're going to be having a circle oh. there, I would go out to rake mm -hmm. and all the leaves, if it's in a circle of trees, of course, there's a lot of leaves there. I, yeah. After I'd raked a few times, the next time I would go out, the, the pathway around the altar stayed clear. In the winter, the pathway around the altar kind of you know, melted and didn't, and didn't build up there. I kind of figured it's the energy that's built up in a magic circle, yeah. heating and warming the snow. And melting it. Yep. But but you know, given that I that's given that I've felt the temperature drop with a really well cast circle when they take it down, yeah. You feel the temperature drop and you feel cool air rush in. See, I'm always on, confused by people great ghosts at graveyards. I am not confused when it's a battlefield graveyard mm -hmm. where you got a whole lot of people who had violent deaths and they're all buried together well it's probably right by the battlefield and that's near where they died gee not a surprise mm -hmm. one of my friends spends her vacation time visiting these graveyards and helping those ghosts pass that's well, what she does i have a theory why there's so many spirits around here and that's because an either an influenza or a pandemic or something went through whenever and you know i mean it's it's nothing to be walking through the woods and come along seven headstones mm -hmm. i am and afraid i must sign off because i have to go eat after my little yes, blood sugar I, incident I, it is we've we've had an hour did yep. anybody else yep. have anything that they wanted to contribute i i don't want to yeah i just want i just want that one that does the housework to come to me Oh, well, so that's you, between the two of you. Okay. Well, you, <laughs> have, a, have a good when evening. I will thing. see. I will see you next week. Great. See you next week. Next, next week, Star Wolf's going to come and he's going to tell us about crystals. So, I, cool. yeah. So, so tune in next week and uh, remember to uh, tell your friends about this because 
it's word of word of mouth the best thing changing times changing mm -hmm. worlds is going to be held virtually november 8th to 14th this year and i'm going to just say this get the vaccine wear the masks wash your hands we love you uh anything else i guess that's a good place to end there